So here it is at last, the Mixergy IHP or Integrated Heat Pump Cylinder, fully installed and operational and it's been working brilliantly for the last couple of weeks since we had it installed. So what I'm planning on doing is um, releasing a series of videos covering everything from the install process, the app, the data that's available, the install and running costs and everything else involved with owning and operating the cylinder. This first video will just cover the install process though, so if you're interested in any of those other videos please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of those. So uh, the cylinder was installed a couple of weeks ago. Um, we had uh, some professional uh, Mixergy expert installers uh, on site to do the install, as well as a couple of guys from Mixergy themselves, because they this is obviously a very early product and they wanted to make sure that uh, the installers were fully trained and to help them improve the training and installation process for future installs. So that was really good to be involved with that. We also had a videographer on site um, who brought his drone along to do some nice aerial shots and other interviews with the installers and Kat and myself for, for their channel. Um, for full disclosure, we purchased this cylinder ourselves, um, but Mixergy covered the install cost for us uh, in exchange for allowing them to come and uh, do some videoing for us. Uh, so without further ado, let me show you what happened on that, uh, the day and a half roughly it took to install a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, let's get on with it. So here it is, the Mixergy IHP cylinder. This arrived yesterday in a huge amount of bubble wrap, which is now down in that corner there. And uh, we've also got a bunch of piping for the vents. And uh, these are gonna be um, taking the inlet and the outlet air so that uh, it doesn't come from the garage, which uh, hopefully will prevent the garage getting too cold. And uh, it will ultimately get installed in this little spot here. So the, this is the um, washing machine and, and tumble dryer. This actually used to be over in this corner, but uh, my dad and I shifted the whole lot over so that there was space for the IHP cylinder. And that will go in here, which is where the old boiler used to be. So the boiler used to be installed up there and it had a vent going out there for the flue. And I just re obviously removed that and I bunged it up for uh, temporarily until such time as it can be extended expanded so that the uh, vent can be one of the vents can be used for that and there's all the other pipes and everything else that can be reused and some of that stuff is going to get moved around a little bit but uh, otherwise yeah looking forward to the install hopefully it should happen later today this is our existing cylinder it's 250 liters so we're going down to a 180 liter cylinder for the mixer GIHP that should be enough for cat and I and it's got the boost function so if we needed extra we should be able to get quick and easy hot water so that'd be good but this is all coming out which means that this cupboard will be spare and we can use this for anything else we want
Okay, so that's the end of day one of the install. Shouldn't be much longer, just one more day probably and it will all be done. But so far what we've got now is the airing cupboard no longer has the old cylinder in it. They've tidied up some of the pipes uh, because what, we, what I wanted to do is basically leave all of the pipes that um, would have fed the central heating system. We obviously no longer have any radiators, but um, I wanted to leave those in place just in case because all the pipes are still in the wall. I've just blanked off all the radiators, so that's all neat, but all the pipes are still in the wall just in case should we ever choose to move house and somebody else wanted to come in and reinstate the radiators for whatever reason, they've got the option and uh, all of the pipes are still there so that they can be hooked back up again if needed. But yeah, um, otherwise we've uh, they've tidied up the pipes as much as possible, removed the cylinder, so we've now got this nice big airing cupboard that we can now use for other things. Um, Kat's probably going to use that for her cross-stitch cross stash, uh, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Maybe we'll uh, choose something else to go in there, but that's to be decided at some future date. The other thing to note that in here is where the feed, the cold water feed for the house comes up um, into the what used to be the old cylinder. Um, but what we've done now is this now loops around and goes back down through the floor, down this one here, uh, this one here, and that is going to go down into the garage. I'll show you that in a second. Goes into the um, mixed G IHP and then the hot water feed then comes back up this one and that then now loops back through to where the old hot water feed used to come down. So there used to be a pipe running down here from the top of the old cylinder, but that's now been looped around so that the, um, the IHP hot feed comes into this and then goes back down into all of the other hot water pipes that feed the rest of the house, the um, showers and the taps and everything else. Uh, this will get lagged just to make sure that that's not uh, exposed and, and hot. And then, um, yeah, that'll be all that done. And this is the other end of the operation inside the garage. A lot of tools still here because uh, the lad's coming back tomorrow. Uh, the old cylinder is currently still in here until they take it away tomorrow. It'll be um, easier for them to take it tomorrow than, than it would have been for them to take it today. So that's currently uh, just taking up some space, but uh, that'll get removed. The IHP cylinder itself is in the corner here where it's um, uh, going to stay for the rest of its uh, existence. The vents are yet to be installed, um, but you can see that we've got two vents. This one's going to be the inle inlet, um, so that'll go up to the ceiling there along and then through the hole that they've drilled uh, in the wall there. So that'll uh, be pulling the air in from outside. And then the other vent, which is the exhaust, that's that one there, that will just um, pop straight in um, up uh, a short distance, an elbow joint into that vent there and that will be the exhaust out, so the cold air will get pushed out there. We've got these two pipes that come down from the um, uh, airing cupboards. One of those is the cold and one of those is the hot. Uh, I don't know which one is which, but uh, I hope the, the chaps know. Um, and that will then get dropped down, which will then feed the cylinder. So the hot will go into here, so that's the top of the cylinder. Uh, and the cold will run down to feed in at the bottom here. So cold in here, hot out the top. And Matt has uh, just currently hooked up the um, the relief valve here. So this is the pressure relief valve that um, if in case there's some, anything goes wrong the and there's a pressure build up, then the um, excess water will get uh, drawn off and out through the existing pressure relief um, pipe that uh, uh, was already in place actually that just goes outside to a, to a little vent um, and they've just hooked into the existing um, pressure relief pipe that used to be uh, feeding all the way up into the airing cupboard there. So uh, yeah, it's all neat and tidy so far. Um, there's a few more, more bits and bobs to do. Obviously the vents uh, are the, the biggest job um, and then just these pipes are just gonna get um, run down through the wall and uh, should all be hooked up tomorrow and job done. So that's it. Actually, there's one other job that needs doing, and that's to mount the expansion vessel up on the wall. So the old one had popped, so uh, that wasn't really doing much good, but um, this is a replacement and that will go up there and that will obviously um, help with uh, maintaining the pressure and minimizing all of the uh, pressure differences that happen when you open taps and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, that all should be nice and neat as well.
So the end of day two and the install is complete. Everything's hooked up and fully commissioned and we've even managed to heat the cylinder up to a temperature where we can use the hot water for showers and washing up, which is fantastic. Uh, we didn't have any hot water yesterday because of the um, old cylinder had been removed. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm sure we're both looking forward to a nice hot shower this evening. Um, you can see the pipes are all lagged and everything's very nice and neat. We've got the new expansion vessel in there. The ducting going outside is all up out of the way, so that's great. That's not going to get in our way at all. And I've managed to reclaim the garage from uh, the absolute bomb site that it was a couple of hours ago. Um, now it's just my usual amount of clutter. We've got our batteries over there, obviously, and the inverter. Um, and uh, we've managed to clear up a bit of space here so that if we need to, we can always bring Cat's car in, but that won't be needed until the winter. But even so, it's nice to have the garage nice and tidy again. And I think the cylinder looks great in the corner, fits nice and neat. And I'm super pleased with the way that install went. So if you're planning on getting a Mixer G IHP cylinder yourself, I hope you found that useful. I would suggest your first port or call would be visiting their website where you can purchase the, the different sized cylinders and also find a Mixer G expert installer that you can get to do the install for you. Um, but otherwise, uh, hopefully the next video will be out in the next couple of weeks. Um, until then, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.